Hi, today we're going to be talking about solubility product constant, and this is part one in a two-part series. Specifically, we're going to look at introducing KSP, writing KSP expressions, differentiating between solubility and KSP, and calculating KSP from solubility. So let's start off by introducing KSP. KSP is also known as the solubility product constant, and that's going to describe the extent to which the dissolution reaction occurs is expressed by the magnitude of this constant. In other words, it's going to indicate how soluble the solid that you're looking at is in water. Values of KSP at 25 degrees Celsius for many ionic solids are given in Appendix 2, Section C, Part 4 of your text. And the text that we're using in this presentation is the TRO text. The good thing for us when we're looking at this solubility product constant is that it's going to follow the same rules as those that apply to any equilibrium constant expression. In other words, the concentration of terms of the products are going to be multiplied together. Each concentration expression is raised to the power of its stoichiometric coefficient. Solids and liquids and solvents, such as H2O, do not appear in the equilibrium constant expressions. So let's look at the reaction BaSO4 as a solid, reversible, Ba plus 2 ions in water, and SO4 minus 2 ions in water. So remember, when we write an equilibrium expression, we consider the BaSO4 as, let's call that A, and then Ba plus 2 is B, and then SO4 minus 2 is C. So if I was going to write a general equilibrium expression for this, I would do products over reactants. So it would be concentration of B times the concentration of C all over the concentration of A. But what we need to realize here is that our reactant, our BaSO4, in this dissolution equation is a solid. So what we need to do is say, you know what? Not allowed. You're not here. So this A part goes away. So when you look at this KSP expression over here, you'll notice that we only have the two ions from up on top. And then if we look up the KSP value in our textbook, it's 1.1 times 10 to the negative 10, which is a really small number. And that means a very small amount will dissolve in water. So let's do an example together and then some practice on your own. Provide the formula, write the equilibrium expression, write the solubility product constant expressions, and the values of the solubility product constants from Appendix 2 for the following compounds. So the first one is barium carbonate. And I know barium is represented as a Ba, and the common charge for that is plus 2. Carbonate is CO3 minus 2. So the formula for this will be BaCO3. For the dissolution equation, I'm going to write BaCO3 and then my double arrow because I know it's not going to dissolve completely. And then I'm going to write Ba plus 2 plus CO3 minus 2 to show that that's dissolving to some extent. The KSP expression will be KSP is equal to my concentration of Ba plus 2 and then my concentration of CO3 minus 2. And then if I was to look up the KSP in my textbook, I would find that it is 2.58 times 10 to the negative 9. Now what I want you to do is stop, fill out the information for silver sulfate, and then check your work. Welcome back. Let's look at how you did. All right, silver sulfate. We know that the most common ion for silver is going to be Ag plus 1. Sulfate is SO4 minus 2. So the formula for this is going to be Ag2SO4. The next thing that we're going to check is your dissolution equation. So I'm going to write my solute, which is Ag2SO4, that double arrow to show that it is dissolving to some extent. Then 2Ag plus 1, because we have that subscripted 2 right there, plus SO4 minus 2. 
Then on to the KSP expression. Remember when we do this KSP expression, we're not going to include our solute because that is a solid and we do not include those in equilibrium expressions. So we're going to write KSP is equal to the concentration of AG plus one raised to the second power and then SO4 minus two. And then finally, you should have looked up your KSP constant in your textbook, which for TRO is 1.20 times 10 to the negative five. And this is a lot of the information that we need to use for this particular section of our notes. Differentiating between solubility and KSP. Solubility is defined as the quantity of a substance that dissolved to form a saturated solution often expressed as grams of solute per one liter of solution. KSP is the equilibrium constant for the equilibrium between an ionic solid at its saturated solution. This is a unitless number. The magnitude of KSP is a measure of how much of the solid dissolves to form a saturated solution. Calculating KSP from solubility. A saturated solution of MgOH2 in contact with undissolved solid is prepared at 25 degrees Celsius. The pH of the solution is found to be 10.17. Assuming that MgOH2 dissociates completely in water and that there are no other simultaneous equilibrium involving the magnesium ion or the hydroxide ions in the solution, Calculate KSP for this compound. The first thing that I'm going to do is write my dissolution equation. So I'm going to say MgOH2 double arrow Mg plus 2 plus 2 OH minus 1. Then I'm going to write my KSP expression based off this dissolution equation. So it's going to be KSP is equal to the concentration of my magnesium ions times the concentration of my hydroxide ions squared raised to the second power. So if given pH, find the hydroxide ion concentration. Okay, well I am given pH. The pH is 10.17. So pH equals 10.17. And then the easiest thing for me to do is go on and find pOH. So I know that if I do 14 minus 10.17, that's going to equal 3.83. So that's my pOH right here. Then finally, to find my hydroxide ion concentration, it's a concentration symbol, I'm going to take the antilog of my negative pOH, which would be negative 3.83. Finally, if I do that, I find that my hydroxide ion concentration is 1.479 times 10 to the negative four, and I'm not going to round here at all because I'm not done with my calculations. Now, if this is my hydroxide ion concentration, and I know that this is in a one to two ratio, that means that my magnesium ion concentration is going to be one half of this. So if I take 1.479 times 10 to the negative four, and I divide this by two, I get my magnesium ion concentration of 7.395 times 10 to the negative five. All right, so I have two key pieces of information here. I have my hydroxide ion concentration and I have my magnesium ion concentration. And what I can do now is go back to my KSP expression and plug those values in. So I know based from up here that KSP is going to equal my magnesium ion concentration times my hydroxide ion concentration squared. Okay, then I'm going to plug in the values that I just calculated. So magnesium ion concentration is 
6.395 times 10 to the negative 5. My hydroxide ion concentration is 1.479 times 10 to the negative 4. That's a 4, and we're going to square that. And when I work this all the way through, I get for my KSP 1.6 times 10 to the negative 12. That is my KSP value that is associated with this pH of a solution at 10.17. So what does this tell me? This tells me that magnesium hydroxide is not going to dissolve all that much in a pH of 10.17. Calculating solubility from KSP. The KSP for CaF2 is 3.9 times 10 to the negative 11. What is the solubility of CaF2 in water in moles per liter? Again, we're going to start out with the dissolution equation. So I'm going to take my solute, which is CaF2, my double arrow, and I'm going to break that down into Ca plus 2 and 2F minus 1. My KSP expression for this will be KSP is equal to the concentration of Ca plus 2 and then F minus 1 squared. Now here I'm using a rice table to help me organize my thoughts. So if I take this expression right here, this equation, and I put it in for my reaction, that can help me stay organized. So CaF2, now remember, this is a solid. We need to keep that in mind. And Ca plus 2 and F minus 1. Now because CaF2 is a solid, I'm not going to have any values for this here because it's in the solid state. Now initially, we're assuming that when this reaction begins, that we're not going to have any ions of Ca plus 2 or F minus 1. All the ions are going to be basically fixed in this CaF2 solid. Then at some point, we're going to gain some amount of calcium plus 2 ions, and we're also going to gain some amount of fluoride ions. Now remember, there's this 2 in front of here, and in these race tables, it's going to be 2x. If your original equation, this dissolution equation, if it has a coefficient in front, that's going to come down into your table. So now what I want to do is I want to look at this KSP expression. So KSP is equal to my calcium ion concentration times my fluoride ion concentration squared. They give me a KSP here. And because they give me a KSP, I can solve for my calcium ion concentration and my fluoride ion concentration. So I'm going to substitute in this number for my KSP right here. So 3.9 times 10 to the negative 11. And I know that Ca plus 2 is going to be represented by this x. So I'm just going to plug that in. I'm going to say, hi, your x. And then my F minus 1 is going to be represented by this 2x. So I'm going to bring this in from the table. And I'm still going to keep that superscripted 2 there. Don't let that go away. Now when I multiply these two numbers together and I rewrite this, I'm going to have 3.9 times 10 to the negative 11. And 2 squared is 4. And then if I do my x squared, that's x squared, and then I'm going to bring in this other x. So overall here, this is going to be 4x cubed. Now to solve for x, I'm going to divide both sides by 4. I'm going to start off by dividing both sides by 4. And then I'm going to take the cubed root of this whole side. So ultimately, x is going to look like this. It's going to look like 3.9 times 10 to the negative 11 divided by 4 taken to the cubed root. And you should know how to do that on your graphing calculator. Which finally, that means that x, which is going to equal my concentration of my Ca plus 2 ion, will equal 2.1 times 10 to the negative 4 molarity. And then my F 
minus one concentration, my fluoride ion, will equal 4.2 times 10 to the negative four molar, because that was 2x. So we're gonna have a doubled concentration down here. And this is the way how you calculate individual solubilities when given a KSP.